Good morning, beloveds. We've been under heat advisories for so long that um, yesterday when I was walking back to my car after work, uh, I was like, wow, the breeze is not hot. It's relatively comfortable. So, yeah, it was 96 degrees out there. But we weren't in the heat advisory. It wasn't in the triple digits. So I was like, that's how bad it's been this summer is that you notice the day you're not under heat advisory. You know, like it's 96 degrees out there and I'm like, oh, this isn't bad. Yeah. Uh, I, I got nothing. Okay. It is September 6th. Our title is Kingdom of God Within. Our author is Ida B. Elliott. This is from the Divine Science News from May of 1945. Jesus taught so plainly that the kingdom he came to establish is at hand, within the power of humanity to discern as definitely and consciously as they grasp visible objects with the hand. To make the location of the kingdom certain, he added, the kingdom of God is within you. When people really devote themselves to the establishment of this kingdom within themselves, the world will begin to realize the mighty power of truth to adjust all the problems of life. The only hope for the world healing is in the application of this fundamental truth. Since, as Paul declares, we are all members of one body, that body will express perfection only as every member is in harmony with every other member, allowing an uninterrupted circulation of life. As this figure of the unity of the great body of humanity is apprehended, people's attitude towards their unenlightened brother will be just the same in gentle solicitude and care that they would give to their good right eye or to their good right hand if they were not functioning in a normal way. All right. So here's where Lisa is not going to get up on her soapbox, but she's probably going to get on her soapbox. Okay. I talk about the Christ consciousness. I talk about the Christ consciousness fairly regularly, okay? And more on more than one occasion, I have said, this is just what we call it in the Western mind, in the, in the Western culture, okay? When I went through ministerial school, there is a reason why they, ta they taught classes. Like I had a couple of classes that covered several religions, but I had in-depth classes on several like major other religions. Why would my, why would my ministerial school do that? To remind us that everybody has a piece of the truth, that frequently we are talking about the same thing, but we are using different words, different phrases, different languages. Um, there's one, and I've seen it a couple of times, where people get all upset about the word Allah, okay? Allah literally translates as father, okay? When the people in the Islam religion say Allah, they're referring to the same God that we use the word God. They're referring to the same God that the Jewish people refer to as Jehovah, and they're referring to the same God that the Hindus call Brahma. The kingdom of God is within you. So what she is saying at the end is she's reminding us, you know what? When we meet people who don't understand that the kingdom of God is within, within them, that they are still struggling with the illusion of separation, that we are to be kind to them and that we are to support them and that we are to help them and we are not to make them wrong. And I say that because it may simply be a language barrier, a culture barrier, a, a 
phrase barrier, a word barrier. Maybe we are talking about the same thing, but we've gotten so fixated on the words that we use that we can't recognize that the words that they're using mean the same thing. And I think that's why she put that at the end. She's like, look, you know what? When you meet people who are still caught up in the illusion of separation, then we give them grace. I mean, people can only meet you as deeply as they've met themselves. So um, that's so we want to do that. And it behooves us to get to know other spiritual traditions because we might find out that in the long run, we're talking about the same thing. The kingdom of God is within you. That means that everybody has the kingdom of God within them. That everybody has access to that kingdom. Everybody has access to God. By going within. When we learn... Not I, I, I want to say when we learn to speak each other's spiritual languages, we'll get along a whole lot better. And then we can have that. And, and, and that's what she's talking about. It's like, we don't go out and say, I'm right and you're wrong. We go out and say, well, where's our common ground? Where, where are we saying the same thing? And let's start there. Because that's where we're going to find the kingdom of heaven. In our common ground. When we can find our common ground, we'll find that we agree on a lot more than we think we do. And then we can work together and create that unity that Ida is talking about. All right. That's why I said, this is, Lisa's not going to get up on her soapbox, but she's going to get up on her soapbox. The kingdom of God is within. All right. So, when people really devote themselves to the establishment of this kingdom within themselves, the world will begin to realize the mighty power of truth to adjust all the problems of life. The only hope for world healing is in the application of this fundamental truth. If it is a fundamental truth, then every single spiritual system out there has it. And I honestly believe that. And it's our job to figure out where the languages differ and figure to find that common ground to find that it we call it the golden rule we call it the golden truth we call it the thread of truth that but that's why i belong to science of mind because what ernest holmes did was he looked at all of the spiritual truths and went you know what they're all kind of telling the same story let's figure out what everybody has in common and that's probably the truth and all of the rest of it is window dressing. And that's why I belong to Science of Mind. Okay. Since, as pa Paul declares, we are all members of one body, that body will express perfection only when every member is in harmony with every other member, allowing an uninterrupted circulation of life. There are many paths to the top of the mountain. The only person who is wrong is the one who's running around telling everybody else that their path is wrong. Paul, in the Bible, said, we are all members of one body. As this figure of the unity of the great body of humanity is, she uses the word apprehended, I guess understood, People's attitude towards their unenlightened sibling will be just the same in gentle solicitude and care that they would give to their right, their good right eye or to their good right hand if they were not functioning in a normal way. It's called grace. It's called love. It's called care. It's called support. And honestly, if we could look at one another and say, tell me, tell me the truth that you know. Tell me the truth that you know. Let me tell you the truth that I know, and we can find that common ground, then we are that much closer to realizing the one body. Okay? 
we are the one body, whether we like it or not. But it's about realizing that one body. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is our attitude towards, and I'm not even going to say unenlightened, towards our differently enlightened siblings with gentle care, with gentle solicitude and care. differently in light because there are very few people out there who are not who are completely unenlightened I think we all have an idea and if we can get come together and discuss those ideas and find our common ground then we'll start to function as that one body so our attitude it's I'm the mission today is to adjust our attitude towards our different, differently enlightened siblings on this planet with gentle solicitude and care. Okay? Tell me what you know. Tell me what you know. Let's find the common ground. That's the mission. All right. All right, Ida B. Elliot, you made me work for it today. And you made it really hard to not get up on my soapbox. So stepping down off my soapbox, I am now going to tell, to remind you about the spiritual practice of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself. Okay. Practice on yourself. You are your own best test subject, but more importantly than that, you deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. I am encouraging you to create a habit of self care. If you are going to live a life of service, you must take care of yourself. You cannot pour from an empty cup. This, the suggestions range from taking a deep breath before you speak all the way up to taking some time off. They also look like saying no to something that is really draining you. They look like saying yes to something that pushes you a little out of your comfort zone. It looks like finding your tribe, but also being open to conversations with other tribes. Okay. You want to find your community. You want to find your good support network, but you want to keep the lines of communication open to everybody else. All right. Um, it also looks like eating dessert first, which means don't save the good stuff. All right. Get out that fine china and stemware and silverware and use it more than once a year. You know, don't save it for a later generation that isn't going to have the same connection to it. Wear the fancy clothes now. Wear the comfortable clothes now. All right. Um, and the rest of the suggestions are basic and easy and simple. Do something to engage your mind and body every day. Uh, unless you have a rest day. Rest days are important. Please build them in. Uh, drink plenty of water as we are still facing triple digits. Um, they said yesterday 40 record, heat records were broken and 50 are on the table to be broken today. Drink plenty of water. Your brain works better. Your body works better. Your skin looks better when you're well hydrated. Drink plenty of water. Uh, and I also encourage you to um, get that early in your day bright light. I, I am not a morning person, but I am telling you getting out uh, around, I try and get out by 7.30 in the morning and, and, and go ride my bike for 30 minutes. And that gets me, there are a lot of trees in my neighborhood. Thank goodness. And hopefully we will keep them. So, um, it, the, it's been very dry, the drought. I'm worried about the trees. Um, that seven to 10 minute of bright light on my face definitely helps. It definitely goes a long way to supporting my mood and my energy and I hope it helps me sleep better at night. I'm a menopausal woman. Who knows? Eh, Post-menopausal woman. Who knows? All right. So, um, yeah, I forgot where I was going. Uh, oh, bright light, seven to 10 minutes, circadian rhythm. Look it up. It's science. Uh, 
And I'm going to remind you, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's a state of mind. Okay. Just as I've said, the kingdom of God is within you. Jesus said it. The kingdom of God is within you. So when we open our soul and allow that state of mind, that state of consciousness, it ceases to be a place we have to get to. It's like, it's not a place that we have to find. It's not a place we have to scrabble. It's a, a mindset that we create. And it helps to remove that illusion of separation. And it helps us recognize our siblings. It helps recognize that we're all one body. And you can always take him as advice. Look for the good and praise him. Okay? So, you know, I've, I've, I've been talking about this stuff. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm at the social media part. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. I encourage you to go and look. Uh, there are hours of content on the um, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, I do need to pick back up on the Instagram. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, if you want to know what's going on with the center, please email info at creativelife.org. That is a constant contact. Uh, you get one email at least a month. Um, a week and that will let you and the hot links are hot it says click here now it'll either take you right to the information or to the to the person that can help you get it so i encourage you to do that um there's lots of great content out there all right yep i'm at the part where i get to encourage you to have a great day a wondrous day a fantastic day a magical day an enchanted day a wonderful day an awesome day a recognition day an understanding day a grace day, a gentle solicitude, solicitude day, a kindness day, a loving day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. You are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God. You are a divine spark, a brilliant light. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. You are a Godling, as Reverend Jesse likes to call us, right? In whom God is well pleased and well represented. Explore the truth of your being and the source of your being. And peel back the layers of who you've been told you are and get to know who God knows you to be. All right. Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I'll be back with you around 9 a.m. Take care of yourself and know that you're loved. Always. I'll see you next time.